One of the biggest news stories, though, that really seems to be flying beneath the radar of the conventional media is what happened yesterday with the SEC and their new ruling on money markets. Now, I talked about this. I wrote a comment about this when I first heard, I first read that Financial Times article about uh, the Fed trying to figure out how to put an exit tax on bond funds, right? And when Janet Yellen was actually asked about it, she denied any knowledge of it in a way that to me looks like it was rehearsed. Uh, So obviously, if you rehearse something, uh, if you rehearsed an answer to a question, then you clearly had knowledge of it. Um, but she said, well, you know, this is the, if, if, if any of this is going to happen, this would be about the SEC, right? The SEC would do it. Well, now here, it's just been a couple of weeks and the SEC is beginning to do what was rumored because what they announced is that there is now going to be an exit fee imposed when you redeem a money market. And there's some other changes for the money market industry uh, that were announced yesterday and passed by the SEC. It wasn't unanimous. There were a couple of guys that were against it, but the majority rules in this case, and so the new rules are going to go into effect. So here they are. First of all, the SEC is recommending or requiring, I guess, that money markets now be separated into two categories, retail and institutional. The difference being that institutional money market funds would allow their uh, shareholders to redeem more than a million dollars in a single day. Which means if you want to put five or ten million dollars in a money fund, you're not going to want to put it into a individual money fund because your redemptions on a daily basis would be limited. So if you need to be able to make larger withdrawals, then you've got to go into the institutional fund. Now, the difference between the two funds is the retail funds will be allowed to offer a stable NAV of $1 per share. And that is what money markets have all traditionally done. The price is $1 a share every day. The fund company doesn't have to calculate the NAV, and the price doesn't fluctuate. It's not $1.01 and 99 cents. It's just always a dollar, and that's the way they're sold, and that's the way people like it. Now, the institutional money market funds, the ones that allow their shareholders to redeem more than a million dollars, they are no longer going to be able to provide a stable NAV. They are going to have to price their fund every day based on the actual value of their securities, just like any other mutual fund. So if you're going to put your money into a money market fund where you can withdraw more than a million dollars, you are going to get a price that changes every single day, right? The other thing the government says, if on the other hand, the institutional funds want to just invest in U.S. treasuries, then they can have a stable NAV. But if they want to buy corporate securities, then they have to have the variable. So a couple of things here. First of all, I think the government is trying to push more people into U.S. Treasuries as they're looking to support the market as the deficits grow and as the Fed tapers, they need more demand. So they want to push institutions out of the corporate world into the Treasury world to create more demand for U.S. Treasuries. That's number one. But the other thing is that the SEC is saying that the mutual funds, both corporate and individual, are now authorized to impose fees to get your money out if the liquidity dries up, if the conditions are extreme. And they have some kind of definition of maybe if the redemptions exceed 15% of their liquidity or something like that. But I think it's kind of ambiguous, and I think the, the fines are too. But a minimum fine that they're suggesting or requiring is 2%, meaning that if the fund company deems it necessary, they can charge you 2% to get your money out, which considering how low the money market yields are right now, 2% is a lot of money. I mean, it's probably years and years worth of interest that you would have earned by being in a money market. And of course, 2% just may be the opening bid. We don't know how high those fees might be. And of course, this applies to all money market funds. So if you've got a money market checking account at a bank, 
one day you might write a thousand dollar check and they're going to charge you an extra 20 bucks because it's a thousand dollar redemption out of a money fund and if you happen to write that check at a time where they say uh you know there's a liquidity problem well you're going to get charged 20 bucks and maybe more i mean who knows i mean maybe the the fee might be so high that it's practically impossible to actually access your money now again why is the government doing this i think it's obvious they're afraid of the bursting of the bond bubble and they're trying to find a way to corral people in their bonds to prevent them from selling now this so far is just money markets but i think it's the camel's nose under the tent you know i think that um they're going to expand this to bond funds because that's what a money market fund is it's a fund of short-term debt a bond fund is a fund of long-term debt. Now, the government claims that they're not worried about the bond market. They're not worried about a bubble. But this is an example where actions speak a lot louder than words. I don't care what they claim. They are imposing these restrictions. They are imposing exit fees, which shows that no matter what they say, they are worried. And they're going to get a lot more worried. And I think they are going to expand this uh, beyond just money markets. I think it's going to be other funds where they're going to be authorizing these uh, redemption fees, which, of course, the mutual funds are all the happy to assess, right, because they, they earn the money. But what does it mean to you? Well, personally, I would think that there's no reason to have a money market fund at this point. I mean, why? The yields are so low. Why not just leave your money in cash? So if you have a bank account, and you have a money market checking account, just go to a regular checking account. That way your, your cash is not in a money market. Now, you'll earn a little less interest. I mean, maybe you won't earn any interest. But, you know, I mean, maybe that's going to be the better course of action. Because if you end up having to redeem and pay 2% or more, you'll wipe out more than, you, uh, more than whatever your interest was and then some. You know, if you've got a brokerage account, you might want to ask your broker to sweep your credit balances just leave it as free cash balances, which you will get some interest on. Tell them not to sweep it into a money fund, because if they put it into a money fund, you might have a fee to get it out of the money fund. Of course, you know, if you don't need the money for a while, it shouldn't be in a money fund or cash. You should invest it. You should get it into foreign stocks or precious metals or something, because the fact that they are trying to bar the door here shows you that they are worried. They are worried about the bursting of this bubble and they are trying what they can to try to, you know, to try to limit the damage when the public tries to get rid of these bonds. The key is get rid of yours now. Cash out of your money markets, cash out of your dollars before the herd is stampeding and the government is sealing the exits. Right now, the exit doors are open, right? There is no bar. Get out the door, sell your dollars, cash in your money markets and invest abroad, get some foreign stocks, get real assets, get commodities, get precious metals, get something. Look, you've got to read the writing on the wall. And in this case, it's all capital letters in big red ink. The government is writing it for you. All you got to do is open up your eyes and look.